They're hoping for medical treatment in Germany. Hundreds of Afghan parents have brought their children to Kabul. Among them is 11-year-old Abdul and his father. Abdul lost both hands in a bomb attack, and he's nearly blind in his left eye. The German aid organization Peace Village International is his only chance for receiving proper medical treatment. I visited other hospitals but didn't recover. That's why I'm here, because I need help with my hands. Social worker Claudia Peppmüller has been flying to Afghanistan for years. She and her team bring severely injured children like Abdul back to Germany for treatment. Since the Taliban seized power in August 2021, she has seen conditions in the country take a dramatic turn for the worse. In all our time here, we've never had so many families come to us. Over 2,200 came. Telling one child you can come and another you can only come later is really hard because you don't know if the child will survive half a year, especially with bone infections. Afghanistan's economy has collapsed. Numerous people are starving. Many qualified doctors have left the country, as have many aid organizations. Children have started coming to us again without any dressing on their wounds or painkillers. We've seen seriously injured children who would be in intensive care in Germany without any pain medication or bandages, just lying at home like that. Before being able to help the children, Claudia Peppmüller and her colleagues need the Taliban's cooperation. Without their permission and valid passports, the children aren't allowed to leave the country. At this point, the Taliban, or men belonging to that organization, are in every department. We've had some really positive experiences. Actually, we were amazed when they requested our help. For about 40 years, the aid organization has been transporting seriously ill and injured children to Germany on chartered flights, to a foreign land far away from their parents and brothers and sisters. You're Nargis, and who's she? What's her name? A few months later, we meet Abdul again in the peace village in Oberhausen. He's been living here with other gravely injured children from crisis and war zones from around the world. It's a community thrown together by dire need, for as long as the surgery and rehab lasts. A medical nurse checks Abdul's progress and explains his treatment. When he came to us a few months ago, he still had a wound here, in the chest area. We managed to remove several little pieces of metal capsules. Once they were out, the wound closed up quite nicely. Abdul still has an operation coming up. It's to separate the ulna from the radius so he'll have a pincer-like forearm. That way, it'll be possible for him to grasp a pen or fit something. Abdul knows the operation will bring him new possibilities. I'm not scared. I'm happy that they're operating on me. I'm not scared at all. Playing helps the children at Peace Village International momentarily forget about their pain, war, and being away from their homes and families. Here, everyone becomes one team, at least for a while, and they all contribute their own experience. It's amazing how each day these children show me how much life is worth living. They show me, use the day, live in the moment. That's also what they learn in their countries. It's not like us. We tend to think everything through right up to retirement. But they'll tell you, you can think about today or tomorrow at the most. But enjoy the life you've got.
Abdul doesn't yet know when he'll be able to return to Afghanistan. But he's already looking forward to showing his father all the things he can do again. Well, my next guest is Pashtana Durrani. She's an Afghan rights activist and co-founder of the NGO Learn Afghanistan, which focuses on girls' education. She joins me tonight from Wellesley College in Massachusetts in the U.S., where she is a fellow at the Center for Women. It's good to have you with us. You know, we just saw images there of, of children on, on the playground, uh, happy children and happy boys and girls. We want to imagine that that's what they are. Do we have, though, a clear picture of how education for girls in Afghanistan has changed since the Taliban returned? Thank you so much for shedding light on this important topic. Um, before coming to this interview, just a few seconds before, I was checking my Twitter and the first thing that I saw was, of course, we all know that the schools are closed right now. Mm -hmm. The Taliban actively are closing down English language courses and computer schools, uh, or courses that we call it, uh, that is more like a coaching center. They're closing them down. So right now, if you want a clear picture, that's the clear picture for you. Any place that gives you socialization, mobilization, educational opportunity for a young teenager girl, they are stopping it, they are banning it, and they're closing it down. And it was hoped a year ago that if the Taliban faced international pressure and if they faced the reality of losing um, foreign aid, then they would keep their promise that girls would be able to get an, an education. But they're breaking their promise, aren't they? I mean, it's not as much as of a promise because when the Doha agreement was done, nobody talked about all these things. Nobody talked about women rights, like girls' education. They don't feel obligated enough to follow that. The second thing is, like it or not, they're still getting aid. International organizations still pay them to give them the security in Afghanistan. The uh, World Food Program, anyone pays them or hires their people. So one way or the other, they are not the ones who are suffering or are worried about the aid. It's the normal people who suffer. So in all honesty, they don't care. They still get to travel in private jets. They still go to Europe to talk about politics. They still live in Qatar. They still have the money. It's the people who suffer. Well, what are organizations such as yours, um, Learn Afghanistan, what are you able to do to help girls and young women and how easy is it for you to offer help? Honestly, that's not, there's not a lot to do. The only mm. room for us to eat or grow is the fact that we can give secret lessons. We have been doing this for more than 400 girls right now and four different regions in Kandar, Kabul, Bamiyan, and Takhar. All different regions. We employ teachers, female teachers who don't have any other source of income. Uh, we make sure that we work with hospitals and humanitarian relief, and that's what other people people are doing too. But at the same time, the problem is how do you send money to Afghanistan? How do you ensure that your teachers are not targeted? How do you ensure your students are not targeted? Mm -hmm. Every day, every passing day is a new challenge for us, a new examination for us, a new testament for us, because every day we have to worry about, did they get the girls get back home safely? Mm -hmm. Did the teachers survive today? And it's always a challenge. I, I know that the Taliban have been in power again for a year now, but before that you had the presence of U.S. and NATO troops in the country for two decades. And I'm sure that that had to have some influence on the way um, Afghan men think. Is there any noticeable voice from Afghan men in support um, of their daughters, their sisters, getting an education? I mean, everyone wants their daughters to go to school. Everyone wants their kids to go to school. The problem is not Afghan men and their mentality changing because of the Western president. Afghan men always wanted their daughters in school. If you look at our 1960s, we had a public women health minister. The same goes for our education minister. A century back, we had a women education minister. Mm -hmm. Problem comes back to the fact that people are scared to talk. Yeah. People are scared. It, they hang a Talib flag just to be protected. And they are too scared to even let their daughters go to school. Yeah, unfortunately, fear is the biggest enemy to education. That is for sure. Pashtana Durana, we appreciate your time and your insights tonight. Thank you. Thank you.